is a very timely article. Uh, I know you're not reading these articles, so I'll, I, I must tell you about it. Captain Rockwood, uh, a U.S. Army captain, uh, complained in Haiti about the horrible conditions of a notorious prison there, uh, where 500 men uh, were kept in one cell up to their ankles in excrement, right? I mean, it was just horrible. He complained, no one listened. He complained up the chain of command as uh, soldiers are taught to complain, no one paid any attention. Then he went there in person with a camera, I think, uh, and he only saw certain parts of the prison before he was arrested. Uh, he was found guilty on four accounts. Uh, he, as he says, he placed his loyalty to the Constitution and to the Geneva Convention, he doesn't mention that, but he did before, above his loyalty to the careers, this is very well worded, to the careers of his uh, commanding officers, uh, of his immediate superiors. That is, loyalty was not an issue here. The careers of, the, of his uh, superior officers was an issue. Uh, so, this is very timely because, of course, uh, someone, I don't know who, and I'm not well informed, but someone uh, distributed the photographs of the torturing and humiliation of the uh, Iraqi prisoners, someone had the courage to distribute, to put in the hands of the press, I think CBS, uh, the photo those photographs or those films of what was being done to those prisoners. Um, now, it must have been, that person must have been a soldier, uh, and uh, I wonder what has happened to that soldier, whether he is uh, in jail somewhere, is he in hiding, has he been killed, or is he a hero? Um, it's this dangerous fine line between what is called whistleblowing in business, usually it's not in the military, <coughs> that is someone blows the whistle on the company when the company is doing something illegal or immoral. If the company is one's own military, this becomes even more serious because now we have not just loyalty but patriotism. The whole seriousness, the whole scope of the issue rises a notch. And for many simple-minded people, patriotism is very close to religion, uh, which is absurd, of course. Uh, how What patriotism has to do with religion is absolutely nonsensical, but uh, I think many of my countrymen confuse the two. Uh, maybe Koreans do too. Um, anyway, uh, this article then is very timely. And the question is, when one knows something bad is happening, uh, or if one is ordered to do something illegal, what does one do? The author of this article, which I know you will not read, said that during the Korean War, his commanding officer told him to kill four Chinese prisoners because it would have taken some soldiers eight hours to take these prisoners to the stockade or to the prison where they would have to be taken and to take those soldiers away from the front lines during that time was very dangerous. The author says that he refused to obey that command as an illegal command against the Geneva Convention. Now, this topic in America, maybe in Korea too, will ignite a lot of discussion which tends to be liberal conservative. The liberals, the bleeding heart liberals as we are called, because I'm basically one, uh, the liberals uh, will be criticized because they are sentimental, they are not realistic, they are idealistic, uh, they are likely to use terms like human rights, uh, Geneva Convention, decency, morality. Uh, the other side, the conservatives, are likely to use, in America at least, such terms as practical, practicality, real-life reality, um, and hard-nosed patriotism. And so the debate goes back and forth. One wonders if it's almost not genetic 
uh, some people are just seem uh, seem likely to be uh, liberals by birth almost, and some conservative by birth. Uh, but it's around such issues, uh, and it's out to such issue, uh, issues that uh, this story reaches. Uh, excellent, excellent thoughts, excellent ideas, very disturbing. In the end, I would say, the, pers the whistleblower is a person who is willing to take the risk of personal harm, uh, danger, uh, humiliation, uh, embarrassment, uh, imprisonment. Uh, such people are courageous people, and everyone must admire them. Um, the conservatives uh, will shake their heads and say, well, they're unrealistic and all that, but even the conservatives have to admire such willingness to suffer personally uh, for conscience, for one's sense of what is right and wrong. Um, so, excellent. Excellent. Worth talking about. As a kind of P.S. postscriptum, uh, I'd like to comment on what I see of uh, the debate about the infamous photographs or filmage of the humiliation and torture, sometimes in some cases, of those Iraqi prisoners. Uh, I read an excellent article uh, yesterday which put it in perspective for me better than I could have. Uh, one thing is certain. Those countries, especially the uh, Arab countries, the Muslim countries, that now criticize the U.S. Uh, because of the uh, uh, criminal behavior, the, the torturing or uh, even killing sometime, in some cases of Iraqi prisoners, uh, are being particularly hypocritical. Did they ever speak up during the years of Saddam Hussein's torture chambers when Saddam Hussein was killing Shiites and killing Kurds? Uh, when thousands, literally people, thousands of people were murdered, tortured, women raped, systematically raped, because that's, that's the modern style of breaking down male resistance uh, is raping their women. Um, did they ever, did these uh, Muslim countries, for example, who are now criticizing the US. Did they ever speak up then? Hypocrites. Very good point. Uh, second, uh, it's still true that thousands of Americans in Iraq are building hospitals, building schools, roads, uh, the infrastructure, uh, electricity, uh, things like that, making life uh, possible and better for thousands of Iraqis. So. The Iraqis understand, I think most Iraqis understand, that uh, what we are doing, we're doing, uh, I think, mostly with, with good intentions. Um, and I think it's pretty clear that we will never be paid back, we will never be repaid for this, and it's costing billions. Um, it's a good thing we're doing there. Uh, and I hope it's a good idea uh, with the aim, the ultimate aim of improving relations with the whole Muslim world. Um, it's risky, but it's a good idea, and I think mostly our intentions are good ones. Uh, now, on the subject of the beheading of that young man, the American citizen who was not a soldier, um, I know that when the photographs were revealed of the uh, sexual, mostly, uh, humiliation of the prisoners, there was also a picture that mo many people don't seem to have seen. And I kind of wondered, am I the only one to see it? No, but people saw it. A picture of an Iraqi man who had apparently been beaten to death and then packed in ice and put in the refrigerator. Well... Now, it turns out that there have been uh, at least two or three other Iraqi prisoners who have been killed, beaten to death. Uh, maybe the intention wasn't death, but the end was death, beaten to death. When I see that, and when I see this, let's call it retaliation, 
on the part of apparently Al Qaeda or somebody, the decapitation, and apparently it was a little bit slow. It wasn't fast. The blade wasn't very sharp. It was messy. Of the American, I must admit, when I see my American, my fellow Americans show this moral outrage that this was done to an American on film, I think that's hypocritical of my my uh, compatriots. If we killed Iraqis in prison and beat that man to death, certainly retaliation is justified. I'm sorry that it was that man uh, who seems to be a almost comical, really. Uh, he was, as I've been told, he was Jewish, and he was in Iraq trying to proselytize, that is, convert people to Judaism. Wow! <laughs> That's folly! <laughs> wow! That's almost inconceivable. That's like uh, going to hell and trying to convert people, uh, souls there, assuming the existence of hell, to uh, faith in Jesus. Sorry, it's too late. That's folly! But the poor man did not deserve to die. It's just some very bad judgment. Um, but let's not talk about, uh, let's not show moral outrage, We uh, talking to us Americans, let's not show moral outrage and indignation that this retaliation took place. Because if it's true that our people killed at least three or four Iraqi prisoners, in addition to the sexual stuff, uh, in a, uh, that uh, electrical wiring stuff, um, we cannot point any moral fingers. We cannot claim any moral superiority. One final note on this. An idea that has become so, so amplified in my own thinking recently. A profound... There are two characteristics I would suggest of Americans, of the American psyche. There are probably more, but two strike me these days. Uh, number one, our dislike of formality. Formal manners, formal language, formal dress, formal thinking. Americans, really, members of democracy, I think it's a common trait of all democracies but it's certainly very uh, glaring in us Americans. Second is more peculiarly American, and that is this deep need to feel morally superior, to feel moral superiority. That's us. That's our president. That's Cheney. That's Rumsfeld. That's basically Protestant America. Is it Protestantism everywhere? I think probably, because I suspect it's in Protestant Koreans too. You judge. Look around and judge. But in my experience, it's much more likely to be claimed by Protestants than Catholics. Uh, you judge. If I'm being unfair, let me know. But it's certainly a, a very lamentable, regrettable, deplorable trait that I think is generally American. And, it's, and it comes out in that little decapitation uh, scene too. It's, our outrage is our desperate attempt to reassert our moral superiority. Sorry, we don't have any moral superiority. Maybe we have some. Maybe we have some. But let's not claim it. Uh, let's not. Uh, let's not claim it. Even if we have. To, even if we feel it, and even I feel it a little bit. Uh, let's not claim it. Let's keep it a secret. Uh, it's unbecoming. It's shabby. Thank you.